Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be about uh, when the chilly air or cold air is going to return uh, below average temperatures. When are they going to return into the U.S. and to the eastern U.S. to be specific. <laughs> because that's where it has been <clears throat> above average for the past several weeks. And uh, it's been very dry. Many locations have been wanting the cool air. Many locations have been, uh, or many people I should rather say, many locations are you know witnessing and experiencing warm temperatures we will see a cool off i think um early october across the east as uh, i'll explain the pattern in just a minute but um before we do uh consider subscribing consider liking this video uh really helps this cha uh, this channel grow helps this video get out to more people so if you want more people viewing this video you like what you're seeing consider liking and subscribing so everybody consider doing that thank you um, so let's start off by looking at the GFS and what it's showing. Uh, so the past several model runs of the GFS have been a little bit, you know, wacky, but they have been consistent. So for the past um, couple of days, the GFS has been showing that, that snowstorm occurring across the west. So let me go to that. Uh, let me quickly click on hour 18 and put this into motion. Also, I want to uh, emphasize that there will be some frost and freezes across northern Minnesota and the UP of Michigan and Wisconsin across Thursday into Friday, uh, mainly Wednesday night into Thursday. Uh, that is due to a a blast of chillier air to come into the Midwest, and that will cool uh, things off quite drastically, again, prompting some flash or free freeze warnings. Again, probably Saturday, similar thing. Uh, be, you know, this cold air will get down fairly far to the south, actually. Uh, a little bit further south than it would on a typical September 28th day uh, on any given year. <clears throat> but it doesn't make its way further too much south before this low pressure uh, bumps it back up to the north. But while this low pressure is forming, you can see it forms a lot of snow on the backside of it. Heavy snow rates approaching 2 to 3 inches of snow per hour and snowfall amounts up to 3 to 4 feet. Um, the Dakotas mainly stay snow free. Um, uh, this is mainly a Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming event. And uh, notice how that kind of dissipates into the east, brings snow to uh, into Saskatchewan and Manitoba as well. But then uh, uh, there's kind of like this. You can see uh, this kind of this pattern starts setting up, and uh, almost like a cold front occurs. You can see right there. Uh, it uh, starts developing right there. Probably some heavy rain across these areas would have to monitor right, for like flooding. But notice how after that the, the GFS advertises a, a a good a good <clears throat> a good area of chillier air, and you can see that uh, actually the 32 degree line, which is theoretically uh, the the 540 thickness line, it theoretically is uh, where the 32 degree. Uh, freezing freezing point is and you can see it stretches down all the way into the midwest parts of northern indiana parts of northern ohio pennsylvania uh eastern northwestern new york i should rather say uh, into parts of northeast minnesota wisconsin and northern illinois you could all be seeing their frost according to this um next week friday so um the model runs have been pretty consistent with this that's the other thing this isn't just one model run showing this uh, they have there have been uh, there have been some you know rather uh, agreeing signs for this and then afterwards you notice how there's uh, it gets the cold air tries making its way again into the U.S. but gets kind of pushed back by the storm but then after the storm uh, passes through you can see heavy snow across this would be uh, across Manitoba and Saskatchewan and uh, Ontario very heavy snow heavy snowfall rates and uh, very heavy rain to the south and notice how we could probably be seeing another chill behind us so the chill here I think will make its way down into the US so don't be you know don't be too impatient I would say a week left of these very warm temperatures consistently warm temperatures because in between these cool periods we will still see some warmer uh, times so let's look at the two meter temperature anomaly and give you a a more example of what's going on so uh, right now as you can see uh, quite a bit of warm air uh, actually a lot of warm air but then uh, notice how th there's a little bit of below average temperatures that kind of prompts a little bit of, of, of freeze warnings and freeze watches for Minnesota North Dakota I'm almost you know confident at this point that they will issue those 
Uh, we'll see though. They will probably get issued tomorrow at midday, or uh, they're probably already talking about it in the long range discussions for those areas. I'll, I'll have, to have to check it after this video. But notice how it gets very warm out ahead of the storm. Uh, an anomalies are 20 to 25, 15 to 20, I should rather say, degrees above average. But then on a flip side of this, look at the northwest. I mean, very chilly. The northwest is, you know, they may be looking at this video title and being like, oh, we already have the cold air. We don't really, you know, we're not really waiting for it. Yeah, because that's where it's going to originate from. It's going to kind of start out there and push its way towards the east and south as we go on to the longer range. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, show you this. You can see that this is where the storm occurs. I mean, look at these contrasts. Uh, ridiculous. Look, uh, 15 to 20 degrees below average, 15 to 25 degrees above average over here in these zones. Uh, 70s, 80s across these areas. This is Monday, September the 30th, so uh, next Monday, and you can see this would just be going on for quite some time, but then the chilly air makes its way into the uh, southern U.S., so you can see that the first major cool-off, and you can see, I mean, makes it all the way to the Gulf Coast, according to this model run. <laughs> so, uh, this definitely would be, uh, you know, a uh, a cool-off, a, you know, a considered a, a uh, considered cool weather this definitely would bring relief to much of the south and east but notice also how there's like, these little blotches of, of white or lighter blue that is actually cities uh, you can see that right there is uh, that is Atlanta that is Birmingham that is st. Louis that's Chicago that's Indianapolis Indianapolis, I should rather say that is uh, Louisville. That is, I think, um, Dallas. Here's Houston. There's New York, and that's basically called the urban heat island effect. And you can see that afterwards, though, there are, things could warm up again. But the you know that the blue that chill stays just right to the north, and it kind of gives us a reminder that this. Uh, could come back at any time, but notice how there's going to be periods of warmth. So if you're asking, you know, this question and you want an answer of when exactly will consistently cold air come through, not in the next couple of weeks, or, uh, you know, it doesn't look like uh, the really chilly cold air that will be lasting for a couple of, you know, more than a couple of days will be coming in anytime soon. There will be blasts of chillier air for a day or two, then a brief warm up. And then there could be another cool off, you know, kind of like a jumping in between these two. So at this point, the cool air, yes, it will make its way into the south and east U.S., but, um, uh, you know, for a temporary time and not necessarily uh, for as long as you, you know, you may want because many, I mean, many folks are complaining about the very warm temperatures going on in the south and the extreme humidity that is coming in from the Atlantic Ocean with all these tropical disturbances riding um, and passing through. So that is uh, that. If we look at the three to four week outlook by NOAA or, or the National Weather Service, the Climate Prediction Center, notice how from October 5th through the 18th, which is a good chunk of October, it shows below average temperatures for the north and kind of the warm air slided down to the south and, and east. Uh, but uh, this is, you know, this is experimental kind of, and uh, you can see that the precip also is kind of overlapping with that blue, so that could mean some more snow for those areas in the north, uh, in northern Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, maybe even uh, Iowa, you know, some snow showers possibly across that time frame. And we're getting to that time of the year where the first snows will start occurring more and more exponentially as already some have started to occur so uh, I wanted to now show you some of the the European model in terms of what it's showing um, in its 500 millibar potential height and notice how for Thursday it brings in a pretty good <clears throat> chunk of chillier air into the US September 26 definitely prompting some freeze warnings or frost, frost advisories and look the contrast become way amplified as a, the, a big chill happens in the west with this uh with this low diving down and uh, producing chilly air across the west again that would lead to the heavy snow and warm air in the east that produces a storm and then uh, that could uh, fade more the european as of now is not showing that big cool off with the that what the gfs was showing uh, afterwards but if you look at the so GFS you know for the past several model runs the new one is just coming in actually you can see that this is the 84 hours out for the midnight one but um, again cool off for Thursday cool off for Thursday and then 
uh, maybe possibly, you know, that, that, that cold centering across the west. So at this point, it seems like the, the chill is going to hold off. Um, but again, it's tough to define of when the cold air will come, it seems. It will come for sure. I mean, you know, it's winter. We're heading into winter. Uh, it's not going to be an above average winter this year. Uh, if you watch many of my videos, I, I claim that. And I still stand by that. And look what the GFS is showing. You can see uh, right there. This was the model run before this. And actually, even more aggressive than the, the one I was showing you. And two meter temperature anomaly. Very, very chilly. And this has been consistent with itself. The GEFS ensembles, relatively uh, a little bit more, you know not as aggressive but still showing a, a chill coming into the at least the northern eastern portion of the u.s we'll see exactly how this plans out how this plays out but at this point it seems like um the beginning of october may uh, may bring some chill for a good portion of the country so consider subscribing guys thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya bye